Hey, what's up guys? Today I'll show you a comedy horror film, The Dead Don't Die. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with the silence of a cemetery, the dark and lonely place meant for the dead. A police mobile then comes into the picture. As it crosses what seems to be an unending road, two policemen come down. The chief is holding a long gun while the gentleman officer leads the way. They enter the forest that looks like it holds a lot of mystery they are about to unfold. As they continuously walk, they see what seems to be a fortress made out of sticks, witnessing a skinned squirrel with flies everywhere. The chief checks the fire and notices it's still warm, believing that someone was there moments before they came in. Later, the chief spots someone is hiding behind the bushes. The person they are looking for is the mysterious man, who decided to leave town and live in the middle of the forest. He tells him that he is visible to their eyes, and they are there to ask him about the farmer's stolen chicken. The mysterious man still tries to hide despite being called out, then fires one shot at the policeman. The gentleman officer immediately prepares his gun for self-defense, as the chief continuously talks calmly to the mysterious man. Time passes. The chief decides it's time for goodbye as the mysterious man suddenly disappears from their sight. He then offers pieces of advice about breaking the laws and staying calm. He and the gentleman turn their backs and start walking towards their mobile. Surprisingly, the mysterious man catches the chief's attention, expressing the disrespectful phrases of greetings. As they drive back to town, they begin to wonder why the sun is still up when it's already 20 minutes after 8. When they realize that the sun refuses to set, both of them start to notice something strange happening. In the forest they have just left, the mysterious man wanders only to find an ant colony, and he starts to notice how the ants are panicking like it's the end of the world, and they are all trying to save themselves from approaching chaos. Back in the mobile, they receive a call from the lady officer at the station, when static suddenly cuts their conversation. The chief then asks the gentleman officer to call the station through his cell, but he finds out his phone is out, just like the watch. They decide to open the radio, only to hear Sturgill Simpson singing, The Dead Don't Die. The song continues to play, as they pass by the Ever After Funeral Home, the detention center, a gasoline station. Then comes the diner where the same music is also playing. Meanwhile, the farmer with an angry beard, who complains about his stolen chicken, casually drinks a coffee and impatiently waits for his order. He asks the waitress to stop the music, like it's piercing his ears. The hand of an in town starts to have a conversation with him, trying to be empathetic about the stolen chicken. The farmer soon leaves the diner, which becomes the cue for the waitress to open the radio once again, only to come up with a news report about the strange happenings related to the Earth's rotation. The same news is playing on the detention center television, where two girls and a boy are watching. Just as the guards come in to tell them it's bedtime, static lines invade the TV, and a horror figure is the last figure seen. At the gasoline station, the nerdy guy in charge is entertaining kids as his customer, for the shop is full of toys and other items that entice kids' attention. He then receives his newest collection from the delivery man. The mysterious man reflects on the upcoming threat to humanity by picking and collecting mushrooms with all the unpleasant manifestations. Another motel guy watches television, which makes him aware of how the animals have become aggressive lately. The farmer also realizes how his dog, cows, and other animals run away from his angry beard. Back at the station, the chief is looking at the corpse of an older woman. The person in charge at the funeral seems strange for everyone. That's why the corpse stays at the station. As soon as the lady and gentleman officers leave, the chief contemplates the peculiar happening, as if something deadly is about to transpire. In the diner, the town's handyman, the waitress, and the female cleaner are talking. As soon as the handyman moves, the two ladies commend him for being such a nobleman. The female cleaner suddenly opens the topic about the strange katana woman in the funeral, serving a golden Buddha. Simultaneously, a strange katana woman with white hair praises the golden statue at the funeral home. After respecting the Buddha, she checks the corpses in the room to fix what seems to be an unusual gesture from a dead body. Meanwhile, a young child experiences another alarming sign through a dream in detention. Having to live in the forest, the mysterious man has the chance to observe some toxic lunar vibrations that give life to the first two zombies in town. A horrifying incident begins to take place when the two zombies invade the diner. As the waitress leaves, a zombie attacks her, biting her neck into death. Another zombie aggressively proceeds to the female cleaner for the most awaited dinner after starving for several years. Both zombies start to devour their meal, only to be distracted by coffee, then soon go with the coffee. 
Blood spills on the floor as the hungry zombies take their first meal from the moment they get expired from the world. A call in the station wakes the chief up. He and the officers come in one by one to the diner to see the cruel and painful death of the ladies. The lady officer comes in last, and upon seeing the bodies, they all speculate that behind the gruesome incident are several wild animals or the reanimated dead in the form of zombies. As the assumptions about the chaos get clearer, three teenagers visit the town for a staycation. They stop by to get some gas and play some jokes with the nerdy guy at the gasoline station as they ask him about a motel in town. After the tragic death of the waitress and the female cleaner, the Katana woman goes to the station to ask and get the corpse for preparations. The lady officer then responds that the remains are now transferred to the county. While this is happening, the chief and the gentleman officer then drive around town to warn everyone about the terrifying event in the diner. At this point, everyone, including the children, notices a sudden change in the environment as if a significant threat to the earth is near. While they are going, they talk about how to kill a zombie. The gentleman officer tells the chief that the only thing to remember is to shoot the head, the same reminders the weird guy told the handyman as they are preparing for the worse. Furthermore, the three teenagers in the motel begin to believe as they lock the door in the middle of the night. One night, the most frightening nightmare is about to get unfolded, the invasion of the undead. The world suddenly welcomes the dead of all ages from the grave, gradually rising from their utmost peace. As the undead penetrate the entire place, the motel guy becomes the hungry zombie's dinner upon going outside. Back at the station, the corpse of an old lady stands alive, signaling the start of the nightmare. The chief tries to aim for the head a few seconds later, only to miss the shot. Then comes the gentleman officer, who cuts a few hits before completely decapitating the poor body of the corpse. At the funeral home, as the strange katana woman puts on makeup to the corpse, their eyes open, and then suddenly they rise, leaving her with no choice but to slice their heads. The farmer experiences the same chaos as the zombie trespasses to his place. His angry white beard gets strangled by the zombie until he manages to explode the hormones of revenge to decapitate its head. As the night gets scarier, the nerdy guy and the handyman in the hardware try their best to secure their doors against the zombies. With the available tools, they mercilessly execute the zombies by dividing them into pieces. While the chief and the officers overlook the town at their station, the lady officer is full of tears, asking for reassurance that everything will be okay, and merely hoping for a bad dream. On the other side of town, the mysterious man sees a massive murder of crows wandering around the sky like they find a feast they could share. Consequently, the chief and the officers silently watch the katana woman who kills and decapitates every hindering zombie. Upon witnessing the katana woman's skills with the weapon, the chief commends her for her bravery and lets the katana woman enter the station. Due to the horrible struggle of humanity, the katana woman asks the chief about the alternative plans to suppress the zombies. She then volunteers herself to stay at the station and monitor everything, and tells them she'll meet them by the cemetery later tonight. Meanwhile, the chief, gentlemen, and lady officers decide to roam and check the whole place as the invasion gets intense. Roaming around town, they discern the zombies are enjoying, asking for a second chance from this world. The zombies are doing the things which are part of their lives when they are still alive. Just like how the zombies play tennis in the field, and the kids search for toys, the zombies execute their urges to continue what they have left in this world. Sadly, their expiration date comes so early to leave their pursuits in peace. On every side of town, everyone is busy trying to save themselves from these ghouls, who are either trying to eat them alive or convert them into one. On the other side, the farmer is busy shooting zombies in the head as they invade his property. The police officers decide to stop by the motel. The gentleman officer comes out of the mobile first, observing the whole place. When they go check it out, they find the dead bodies of the three teenagers being eaten like a meal. To prevent them from being undead, the gentleman beheads each of them through his machete. When it's the girl teenager's turn, he stops midways to look at the CD beside her, indicating Sturgo Simpsons, the dead don't die. A splatter of blood comes across their faces, and the emotions begin stirring up once again. Back at the station, the katana woman is doing something on the computer that seems to be a password or a form of communication in different secret codes. The three officers continue to drive around town, unsure what they are looking for, as the zombies are already everywhere. They pass by the first two zombies, who killed the ladies at the diner, fueling themselves with coffee. After a few minutes of driving, they pass by the hardware shop and notice the number of zombies surrounding the door, worried for the handyman and the nerdy guy. 
The chief is contemplating whether to go down and check on them, but the lady officer is full of fear and begs him to continue driving. Inside the gas station, the handyman and the nerdy guy continue to cover their doors with wood. The back door begins to bang as they are resting, followed by many zombies ready to enjoy their next victims. The two stand up with a hammer and a drill on their hands. As they look at the number of zombies invading the shop, they accept defeat, facing the last nightmare they have to go through before becoming undead. As the zombies grow exponentially, the three children successfully escape the detention and run through the town. Meanwhile, the mysterious man silently watches the farmer, as he busts off the zombies' heads around his property in the forest. However, demise arises when the farmer gets outnumbered by zombies, making him a super meal. Witnessing the farmer's death becomes a graceful act for the mysterious man, since this farmer accuses him of stealing the chickens. Moments later, the police mobile suddenly stops in the middle of the cemetery. The zombie's arm they ran over is stuck in one of the wheels, preventing the vehicle from operating. The gentleman officer then repeats his words about how this is all going to end. The irritated chief yells, asking the officer to shut up, triggering the lady officer's emotions. When the lady officer begs them to stop, an older woman's voice calls her from the outside, who happens to be her deceased grandmother. Full of emotions, the lady officer opens the door to see heaven. Next, the katana woman is peacefully driving around town, using the officer's red convertible, gently avoiding the zombies she gets to pass through. A model zombie gets her attention, so she stops to look at her, and the zombie then poses for her, only to decapitate. The three kids see everything and immediately go to the body as soon as the car moves away. The white girl convinces her friends that she knows a safe place where they can hide, and the three begin another running journey through the town full of zombies. Thinking about their situation, the chief and the gentleman start to have a conversation. The chief cannot stop himself from commenting how the officer is so calm, despite a situation where panic is expected, and asks him why it seems like he knows everything that is about to happen. The gentleman officer then tells him that he knows, because he has read the script. The chief begins complaining that he is only given a hand with certain parts, not knowing how the story will ultimately flow. While the argument is ongoing, the katana woman arrives at the cemetery through the red convertible. The zombies suddenly move away from the police vehicle, like they are being called onto something. From there, they witness the spaceship claiming someone. The katana woman is then captured by the spacecraft, before it moves away from the demolished earth. Upon gazing at the magical incident, the chief and the gentleman officer become puzzled, as the episode is not written on the script. The movie ends with the mysterious man seeing everything through his binoculars. He spectates how the chief and the gentleman officer get stranded and surrounded by the undead. Some undead was once a friend, enemy, colleague, and individual of various ages. In the middle of the cemetery, the two policemen become warriors, holding a gun and pounding a machete. Knowing that their strength is limited, for they are mortals, their best is enough in the losing battle. As the sun delays the ray of sunshine, the frightening threat to humanity is about to expand. On that day, in the town of Centerville, the dead don't die. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.